Audrey Lord says, I write for those women who do not speak, for those who do not have a voice because they were so terrified, because we are taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We've been taught that silence would save us, but it won't. The most important part at the core of the feminist movement, regardless of what form it takes, is giving women a voice. Gender equality movement is letting women know that their voice matters. It's not necessarily trying to make women stronger, because women are already strong. It's just letting the world recognize the humanity in women and treating us as deserving of being heard, not for anything else, but just the fact that we are women um, and the fact that we are human. So um, basically, I think we should just, we need to recognize the importance of our voice as women. I think over the past two, three years or so, we've been having a lot of movements of women speaking up, mm. different NGOs coming forward, activists in different countries in different ways. and. To an extent, when a group of people start speaking a lot, you start wondering, ah, why are these people making noise? Mm. Um, so it's first of all important for us. I think we should start with recognizing why it's important for us to speak, why right. it's important for our voice to be heard amongst the many different voices that we're hearing in society. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the things that rings in my mind um, on the show was previously when we talked about a lady, a, a uh, fat, well, I don't know what we call it, the most important correct word, plus size. <laughs> a plus size lady coming out to question the AMVC award, fashion, say, fashion award, that they are not inclusive of women, uh, of, of plus size women in their categories. And it made me think that it was one of like those light bulb moments that that is why you need a voice because I would have never used my voice to say that. I don't yes, have that reality. issue. And that's why it, it really now strung me that what I'm thinking that I don't need to say and it's not really important, and maybe I'm the only one going through it, could actually be the detriment of, you know, part of the problem. Because mm -hmm. if I spoke up for someone, I could be speaking for a lot of people that are thinking that, and that's why, that was the first time I saw that, okay, this thing actually has power. Because mm -hmm. then I, as a non-plus size person, is also thinking of their issues and, and mm -hmm. questioning myself, like, oh, is there actually a fundamental bias I have towards these people? I, mean, mm -hmm. I think one other way, because when you mention voice, sometimes why I'm a little reticent when it comes to the feminist movement, and mm -hmm. I tend not to associate with any movement, so mm -hmm. it's not just feminism. I tend to just wait for the issue issues that come up and then if it makes sense to me, I key in. Mm. Because I just feel that on both sides, whether men or women, people have that capacity to abuse collectives. Mm. So, mm -hmm. But when you come to talking about voice, I think one way to speak or to articulate yourself is through doing. If I was a plus size woman, I would just wear my plus size and be happy in my plus size. Mm -hmm. And by demonstrating it, going for the AVM, if people saw you looking as gorgeous as you are in your plus size, I think that will speak volumes. You know what I mean? So sometimes I find, I'm just suggesting that sometimes women go to war over things that really just being and doing and living and almost acting as though you didn't even recognize the war was there in the first place. But for me, can actually yeah, do more than taking on every battle. Is the question I, 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 I wish that I started this conversation with, which mm. is just, um, in recognizing the importance of our voices as women, are we recognizing the voice as the voice for the people or for anybody or just women's voice for women alone? Because I have seen women who have very strong voices. We cannot take away the fact that there are people whose voices are stronger than the other, right? And when it comes to glaring situations that they should speak up for, even the men or a boy child, they tell you, Nah, that is that is not, That's not my calling. what we are talking <laughs> about. That does not affect us. Let it come to me when it has to do with feminism. And I'm wondering, do we have to define? I understand when you do not understand that struggle at all. Like you said, you didn't think of, about it. I mean, you nobody would expect you to start advocating for a mm -hmm. plus size, except you have a plus size friend mm -hmm. that you've had to deal with her struggles with her, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody expects you. But there are general issues that we know Effect that even when we're beings. fighting fem, fem, the feminist um, um, battle, we know that we also need men to understand this movement, or we probably will not have any um, um, progress no in it, you know. So, so how do we get to understand that our voice as women should be the voice for the people and not just for women? I'm going to leave it to you to, to eat the bigger bones, but I just want to start with um, what Evely said. Um, I think that that is too... Um, um, it's not enough, that idea of just me. I think that it's, it, it's even before this table, before this generation, that it's, it's very clear that when humans come together, when there's more people, the broom is stronger. So mm -hmm. apart from just one 
very confident, chubby lady going to the fashion show, doing her own thing. The effect that has is not enough in comparison to having a body, a collection no, don't get me of wrong. women. I'm not saying one chubby lady. I'm saying if, if she demonstrated it by demonstration Other rather than by follow. speaking, because her voice is one thing. No, but there, there, her, her there's still some, there's still some significance in having that intentional movement. Maybe you might not call it one and name it and have a body and conference like it is. But what do you for feminism. The intentional movement. That intention, I think, is what she's talking about because you're deliberately acting acting out your activism. Well, is, is it intentional if you're not adding other people and carrying them along? No, no. I, again, I, maybe there's several issues I mentioned. So one of them is I don't necessarily want to belong to a feminist movement. Mm -hmm. But if there's something like now where there's a, a project we're driving about sanitary, affordable sanitary tiles, as the issues come up, I'll key in. Mm. But I've always found that when there is a collective umbrella, because once you say feminism, then people assume that there's a certain disposition you have towards men. And if I don't share that, why am I, why am I, why am I being you, forced to why, answer why that? Would the, why, would the disposition of the, yeah, why would the perception of other people affect in regards what to you're movement doing. affect the Because the collectives cause. tend to be a shared identity. And, and you may not key into every aspect I, okay, of that Okay, can identity. I ask one really quick question? Are you a Christian? Yes. But Christianity has a lot of perceptions. You said, I, for one, can't even uh, no, I'm glad stand, you brought that up. stand that. But I'm, I'm sure you would say that. No, 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 no. I'm glad you brought that up. Because even as a Christian, I don't generally... If they say membership, I don't. They know me. But for you that. still call yourself no, a but Christian. The I you do still is identify the, the, with what that. I, what I have in common with anybody is that word of God. As long as we can agree on what is written, so, but we do you have an agreement. Have but common... anything else you're doing outside of that, I'm but you still have the tag of, Chris, of being because a Christian. Christianity is, is much more fundamental than a lot of these things we're discussing. A lot of these things are man-made, so a lot of them have are to they? do with yes. A lot of them have to do with human beings coming together and say, "Oh, we," because someone could identify. People would argue that Christianity could, is also man-made. If man -made, I ask both but... of you to define feminism, you may have completely different definitions yeah, because no. they're human beings. But Christianity, there's a word. Okay, yes. I'm sure they will have different. But um, as a feminist, as well. as we have two feminists on the same. Those that I identify openly with the movement right mm. are you very uncomfortable when you see or hear that a woman is openly saying i don't want to be tagged a feminist i am Why? and one of the reasons is because i, I kind of like christianity and i'll use that example mm -hmm. i could believe in god and i could follow go to church but i don't necessarily call myself let's say a pastor mm -hmm. because i'm more invested in it mm -hmm. but then that doesn't take away from the fact that if i'm a passive member of the church i'm still a christian mm -hmm. so i why can't i use that term but yeah. with, with feminism it's like oh but i don't champion anyone and i don't believe in everything but it, but the, the core of it for me, it's like so simple that everyone should be feminist. Now, if you then want to dive inside and talk about what you're focusing on the feminism and who's bad and who doesn't get it and all the people that are saying the wrong thing and the ideas against men, and there's so many levels to that, that yeah. to, then, to then define the major cause, which is so simple that we want equality for everyone. It just happens to be that the people who are oppressed right now are women, so that focus is on that. But if mm. the tables were flipped, we would still be championing the men that, that are oppressed. I know that a part of Fair feminism, if, even if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, gives everyone the ability of choice right so you can choose who you want to be yeah what you want to identify how as to and how you want to be treated and that's why so I if have... you are coming to say that you're not comfortable with anybody saying don't call me a feminist no 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 no. i'm not why is that people not saying that they don't want to be feminist like i i, I understand if you if you say you don't want to be a feminist. you don't even have that to say why are you saying that was yeah, my question but i don't i don't what i don't like is when people bash the feminism. No, my movement. question was well, the first one. Right. Okay, are you not comfortable? Why are you not comfortable when people well, you say don't, I'm no, not I'm feminist? Actually, maybe I got you wrong. I don't mind you saying that you're okay. not a feminist. Like okay. I, I don't have to identify as a Christian, and but then to say that oh, it's a bad thing, and oh, no, 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 no that wasn't yeah. my question. Well, okay. I mean, I think too. So let me let me answer your first. Bashing feminism. Hopefully, and I can't speak for those who do it, but hopefully, people are critiquing aspects of feminist movement. They're being specific. So if, for example, just because it's a feminist movement and it's my fellow women, if they say something that for me doesn't all go well with yeah. what is just and what is equitable, just because they've taken that position, I will not align with it and I will critique it. No, so I have sure. no allegiance to no, say sure. I must sure. identify. I don't think, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I disagree about. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think okay. there's, there's a... Oh, once you're a feminist, and these are the guidelines, so you yeah. have to do this, you have to follow. Once this person says yes, then you must say yes mm. to. If this person bows you to, you must mm. bow. I don't yeah. think that's how it is. Even, yeah, like she said, feminists, like, argue. But I'm going to jump back to the first thing you said about, like, the intentionality about it. Mm -hmm. I think when you say, you know what, it takes one person to just, you know, wear what they want to wear and go out. And then others will wear it as well. Hopefully. We can apply it to so many different things that women do. We can say, you know what, as a woman, I'm going to just walk out here with my bra. Mm. whatever if i do that i'm probably going to get stoned or taken to yaba left because they're going to think i'm mad right the importance of the voice is to give you that support to be able to, to do, do that. that to be able to say you're going out we're supporting you and anything going happens you. to yeah. you mm. we're going to be behind you yeah. i guess maybe I, i'm not against the voice but perhaps what i was suggesting is an alternative because right. i find that a lot of times 
people um, go to war, assuming that the only way to go to war is a confrontation. When there are other more subtle, nuanced ways to actually win the battle. We've been doing, that. Yeah, we've been doing no, that. No, no, I'm not saying so we're not. I'm just still... I'm, yeah. I'm, oh, yes, it is. Uh, oh, yeah. And this yes, is why I'm not is. comfortable <laughs> to be yeah. called but a feminist. I, mean, but but I don't think about it. It doesn't even have to get to that point. Here's the thing. A lot of the things that we're presenting right now as feminists, they're not things that are hard. Yeah. The reason why they're hard is because people are opposing them. People are resisting, saying, no, you, you can't that do that. that because back to my method of communication. Conditioning. People it's will resist you if you come you as if you're going to do But do you understand that, that saying confrontation? You don't want to be cut anymore. Okay. How do you subtly say that? that? I, I, but I, guess I who, hear you. I agree. Guess who's endorsing clitoris being cut? A lot of them are women. So why not start by emphasizing those women? We are doing that. Confrontation and war does not solve conditioning. It does not. So if you say we've gotten to the point where, oh, we've had the conversation, no we've sorted it. enough, <laughs> and it has to now be confrontation, uh, it is uh, not it's, going it's to help any patriarchal mind. I feel like mind. it's been helping. I, I feel like we've been having but a said, lot. But you guys said, on the other hand, that you're meeting a lot of resistance. So we're saying there are other ways. There will always, always be resistance. resistance. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I think resistance. it's time for a break. But thank you so much, Ekene yeah. and Ebele, for doing this with us.